in Scotland. The Covid rule breaking MP Margaret Ferrier has lost her Westminster seat after a recall petition reached the support of enough of her constituency. Labour think that they can take the seat from the SNP, who in the last election won by 5,000 votes. Let's discuss this with Kate McCann. So, breaking news. Mm -hmm. I don't suppose it's that surprising, though. No, I don't think it is. In fact, uh, Scottish Labour, within the last five minutes have already tweeted a campaign video for this seat. So wow. they were not surprised at all. They were ready. They Let's were ready. Let's just remind people what Margaret Ferrier did. People will remember this story because at the time, you've got to set it in context, at the time it was jaw-dropping, in my view, her behaviour. Just yeah. shocking. It really was. And it shocked a lot of people, actually. It was, of course, during the COVID-19 period. She had felt some symptoms of COVID-19. She'd been in the House of Commons that day. She'd taken a test, realised that she was positive for COVID. And instead of isolating in her London flat or in London in a hotel, she took a train back to her constituency in Scotland. And she was subsequently discovered to have done that. Now, she has, Margaret Ferrier, fought this all the way, has been determined not to resign her seat. She's been very determined to try and cling on. The SNP won the seat in 2017 from Labour, as you were just saying there, yeah. with a 5,000 majority. So it's not a huge majority for the SNP. But now this recall petition, which required 10% of voters in that seat, which was 8,113 people, to vote in this recall petition, those in themselves are quite rare. They mm. haven't happened very often to overturn her decision ultimately and now there will be this by-election. So Labour's candidate, as I said, you know, within the last couple of minutes, they've tweeted a video saying, you know, you demand a change, Labour wants to try and win this seat back and they probably have a fairly decent chance of doing so. And just your view on why Margaret Ferrier would have fought it tooth and nail. I think you, you might have felt that she would have thought ages ago, all right, you know, I've been banged to rights on this one, yeah. you know. And remember at the time, people, you know, the, the, the great mantra was, don't kill your own grandma. You know, pe people thought that she might well, and she could have done, infect people on the train, and they might die as a result of her decision to get on that train and travel all the way back to Scotland yeah. from London. And they might have done. It's not even far-fetched. It wasn't even ridiculous. It wasn't exaggerated. She might have, by that decision, given COVID to people who might have been vulnerable or might have got desperately ill or might have ended up mm. in intensive care just because she chose to do that. It was an incomprehensibly selfish thing to do at the time. Yeah. And having done it, and having been found to have done it, you think that you might simply hold your hands up and say, look, it was a terrible mistake. I'm very, very sorry and go and work for a charity somewhere quietly. I think she felt at the time, I mean, she, she made a, a number of different excuses before finally conceding that clearly it, it was not a good decision to have made. Oh, blimey, no. And her party felt that it was a decision that she shouldn't have made and also a very difficult situation for her to recover from. But I think that given everything that was happening at the time with questions about Boris Johnson, questions about Partygate, I think she perhaps felt that she may well be able to just ride this one out and that people would ultimately forget about it because she's an SNP MP, she's not necessarily a face that everybody knows or a name that everybody had heard of. And she was a relatively new MP at that point. Clearly, that is not the case. And as always happens usually in these situations, if your constituency feels that they've been wronged or that something shouldn't have happened, they will ultimately, in the end, whether via this method, which is, as I say, mm -hmm. relatively new, or in an election, turf you out. And with a 5,000 majority for the SNP and a party in Scotland at the moment that is not in the best shape, it yep. has to be said, yep. I think Labour recognises that this could be a real, a real opportunity for them and something that they need, remember, to win those seats in Scotland if they have a chance of forming a majority government in okay, Westminster. Thank you very much.